Hello and welcome back to another reading vlog. I am equal parts excited and nervous for this reading vlog. I think if I'm remembering correctly this is the first like themed reading vlog aside from like a readathon reading vlog. Um, this is the first kind of like on my own themed reading vlog that I'll be doing um, but I'm also very nervous um, because I'm going to be reading an author that I never thought that I would read um, and that is Colleen Hoover. Um, I feel like I'm just gonna say right off the bat I feel like this is gonna be quite a controversial video um, only because I'm reading these books in order to try to prove my preconceived notions wrong. <laughs> I know Colleen Hoover is huge. She's a huge primarily romance author and TikTok absolutely loves Colleen Hoover. Booktube as well but like the book side of TikTok when I was um you know frequently scrolling through TikTok it was like every third video would have a Colleen Hoover book recommended in it or every fifth video was a book was a video about a Colleen Hoover book and I have no problem with authors that have a huge amount of hype. I read plenty of authors that have a huge amount of hype. As much hype as I was seeing behind Colleen Hoover's books, I was also seeing a lot of negative things about her books that they aren't really all that good. Um, I was seeing lots of negative things about her writing style. Um, I was seeing lots of negative things about the relationships in books, um, prim particularly that like they're very unhealthy and toxic and yet these are romance novels. And so I was kind of having this very preconceived notion that while I rarely read romance, I occasionally very 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 occasionally will pick up a romance novel um, because I do try <laughs> to diversify the genres that I read. To be honest I only read one romance novel this year it was The Love Hypothesis however I ended up really really enjoying it. I had a lot of fun with it but I always thought that I was never ever going to pick up a Col Colleen Hoover book because I was convinced they aren't good. I realized that's not fair of me to have that opinion of the book if I've or the books or the author if I've never read them myself. So we're gonna read them in this vlog. Not all of them. She has quite a large backlog. We're gonna read the top three um, most popular um, according to Goodreads and the number of ratings that they have on Goodreads. Um, we're gonna read her top three most popular books. Um, if she only had like five books in her backlog I'd only read like the top one but she's got quite a long list so I'm going to read the top three so that I can form my own opinion um, based off of my own experience reading the books. And I truly like I want you to know if you're a Colleen Hoover fan I'm not hate reading these books. I am reading them in actually the hopes that I'm proving myself wrong. I don't want to waste my energy reading books that I don't like so I'm actually really hoping that I ended up enjoying these um, but we will see. Um, so I'm actually going to go to Half Price Books um, and pick them up or hopefully pick them up. Hopefully they have them in stock. Um, I'm gonna go do that today. Um, I'm going to Half Price Books because I don't want to pay full price for them in case I end up being correct and I don't like them at all. And I know you're probably saying, Sarah, just go to the library if you don't want to pay for the books. And I could do that. Um, that's actually a really good strategy. However, because they are so popular, I already know they're gonna be really hard to get my hands on at the library. It's gonna take a long time. I'm gonna be put on a waiting list. And if I I already know that if I drag this vlog out and I take a long time to like read each of the books, film everything, um, I'm gonna end up petering it out and I'm gonna end up abandoning this vlog and I don't want to do that. So we'll see, um, but we are gonna go head out to Half Price Books, hopefully pick up her top three most popular novels and I will come back um, when I have them. <laughs> I'm back. I got the goods. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what these are about actually. I um, bought them and didn't read the synopses so that we could read them here together and I can learn what, them, what they are about. So Colleen Hoover's most popular book on Goodreads, the like number one um, most rated book of hers is It Ends With Us um, and I'm gonna read the back. So 
I already don't like this tagline. Um, is this some, is, considering this is supposed to be a romance, like it'd be one thing if it wasn't supposed to be a romance, but I don't like it because it's supposed to be a romance. And it says, sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. Um, Lily hasn't always had it easy, but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She's come a long way from the small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston, and started her own business. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kincaid, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn, maybe even a little arrogant. He's also sensitive, brilliant, and has a total soft spot for Lily, but Ryle Kyle's complete aversion to relationships is disturbing, as questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love and a link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector, but when Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Ryle is threatened. With this bold and deeply personal novel, Colleen Hoover delivers a heart-wrenching story that breaks exciting new ground for her as a writer. It Ends With Us is an unforgettable tale of love that comes at the ultimate price. Okay, so I'm actually even more interested in this now because it says um, it's a deeply personal novel for Hoover and actually reading that kind of like triggered something in my mind that reminded me that I do actually think this is um, based around experiences that Hoover has had with relationships. So I actually do have a little bit higher hopes um, for this if it's kind of maybe a um, writing from her own experience and maybe a kind of therapeutic cathartic release for her as a person. Um, so we'll see. Um, but that is her highest rated or highest most rated novel, not highest rated, most rated novel. Um, the second one is Verity. And actually, um, before I even knew who Colleen Hoover was, um, I had heard about this novel and was actually quite interested in reading it. I think I have it on Goodreads as like want to read. It's in my obscenely long list of books that like I hear about, I click on want to read on Goodreads so that I remember them because um, from my understanding, this is more of a thriller novel. Now, I actually don't remember what it's about. I just remember when I heard about it, it sounded super interesting um, because of its thriller vibes. Um, and so we're gonna, again, read the back together. Um, so it says, Lowen Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford, has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. Lowen arrives at the Crawford home, ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. When Lowen, What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone-chilling admissions, including Verity's recollection of the night her family was forever altered. Lowen decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents could devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognizes all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it, make it impossible for him to continue loving her. So it's, it's described as a standalone romantic thriller. So I've, I actually am still quite interested in this one. And then her third most popular novel and the third one that I got is Ugly Love. Um, so this says it's not exactly love at first sight for Tate Collins when she meets the tormented and secretive Miles Archer. They wouldn't even go so far as to consider themselves friends. The only thing Tate and Miles have in con common is a mutual attract is a mutual physical attraction that can't be denied. Once their desires are out in the open, they realize they might have stumbled on the perfect no strings um, attached arrangement. He isn't looking for love and she doesn't have time for it. So that just leaves the sex. Oh, great. Great. <laughs> what they've got could be surprisingly satisfying so long as Tate can stick to the two rules Miles has for her. Never ask about the past, don't expect a future. They think they can handle it, but everything is different when real emotions start to change the equation. Hearts get infiltrated, promises get broken, rules get shattered, loves, love gets ugly. Um, this is the one that I'm the least excited for. I just don't 
really like um, relationships. I mean, obviously this is supposed to like bloom into a romantic relationship. It, I, I, it's not, it doesn't sound like my jam. The whole like relationships only for the sake of sex is not my jam. But it's her third most famous novel, so there are these three. And I think the order I'm going to read them in, I'm going to, I think I'm going to read Verity first because it's the one that I'm most interested in out of the three and I want to start out strong with the book that I have the highest hopes for. Um, I think that will just set a good tone or mood for the reading vlog. Um, hopefully. So we're gonna go with this one first and then I think we're gonna go with Ugly Love second because it's the one that I'm the least excited for um, and I think if we stick that in the middle that's that's a good place to stick it. Um, and then we'll do It Ends With Us last since it is her most famous novel. It's the biggest one, the one that she's the most known for. So that is the order that I think we're gonna read these in. So I will check in with you when I have either read 100 pages or have something that I want to talk about about this book, whichever one comes first. with an update. Um, I'm about 100 pages into Verity. About that far into it. Um, and it's okay so far. Um, it isn't like truly captivating me or blowing me away, but it's not bad so far. So basically, kind of like what I was talking about before when I read the synopsis, we are following our main character, Loen. She's kind of a struggling author. Her mother, she just had to kind of take care of her mother um, for almost a year. Um, she had cancer, she just passed away, um, but like kind of during that year, her writing career really plummeted because she wasn't able to really write um, during that time. Her books don't normally do like super well anyway, so she's kind of like just living off of like the declining royalties that she's getting, um, but she ends up getting an offer from the husband of the super famous um, author who has recently been in a car accident and is unable to continue her series and so the husband um, offers her kind of a contract to ghostwrite the last three books in the series and so Loen agrees to do it and ends up going to the house of Verity Crawford, the author, the famous author, um, to then sort through her office and all of like the notes of her um, previous manuscripts and any notes that she has um, kind of for the plan for the rest of the series um, to try, try to get started on ghostwriting. Um, and so Verity is kind of in a like She's awake, but she's in kind of like a coma state. I, I don't know how really to describe it. Like she's she's awake, but she's not responsive or anything. Um, and she's staying in the house. Um, they have an at-home nurse. Um, and then Jeremy is the husband, and he's there, kind of like trying to help make Lo uncomfortable. Um, in during her kind of exploration of. Um, Verity's office. Verity's office is just kind of like an absolute disaster. Um, notes all over the place and so Loan has a big job ahead of her and while she's kind of trying to start sorting through the notes she finds a autobiography manuscript that Verity had written um, and we are slowly going through that autobiography manuscript. Um, we've gotten two chapters into it and we already know right from the get go that it's going to be a very honest kind of like ugly look at Verity's life. Um, she kind of tells us that in the author's notes um, before the first chapter and we start when Verity and Jeremy meet um, and it's a very 
um, unhealthy, like, obsessive, codependent relationship. However, Verity, like, addresses that as in, like, she is aware that that is the case. Um, and it makes sense because it's, like, a thriller, so things are supposed to be a bit darker in this story. Um, and Lowen is also feeling increasingly uncomfortable being in this house around Verity while she's reading, um, a very private, intimate, um, autobiography, um, but also Verity is, like, just things are being, things are kind of strange, um, and that's kind of where we're at. So, I have some theories as to where this book is gonna go, and if they go where I think they're gonna go, um, this is not gonna get higher than a three star, um, because I think the where I think it's gonna go is very obvious. And like I said, I'm not like super drawn into it, super pulled in. Um, I'm just kind of like curious enough. Um, you know, it, it's not horrible. The writing is super plain. Like there's no real sense of like flourish and there's no real sense of like voice to, or like style to it. It feels very just cut and dry plain kind of writing um which isn't a bad thing there are plenty of people that like that writing style it's not entirely for me um i usually like some sort of like sense of style um when i'm reading from any author really um but yeah i just um i'm just kind of eh about it but we'll see things are starting to pick up a little bit like i said i'm only the first hundred pages um so i've still got like two-thirds of the book to go um but yeah i wanted to just drop in kind of give you an update on my thoughts so far hello again i am back um and i have finished verity and you know what this was decent this was decent this is a decent thriller um now i will say i'm only giving it a three and a half um for a few reasons this was pretty predictable all the way up through until the very 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 end i will say the last like two chapters i think like yeah the last like two chapters they did get me i didn't predict it and i was kind of kicking myself because it lined up with a couple of other things that were hinted at earlier in the book i did predict like everything else up until those last two chapters but the last two chapters i was impressed i was like oh okay like i i liked it i was entertained um, just throughout the most of the book I was entertained. It did take me a while to really get into it um, because like I said the writing's very 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 plain like very plain there's no real like flourish to it and I also had a hard time like really connecting with the main character because she felt very flat to me. Um, I, I felt like there was no real substance to her there was also a few inconsistencies that kind of bugged me like particularly with she's supposed to be this like very very introverted kind of loner person that doesn't like that is very awkward around other people yet she was totally fine with just like taking off her top um in front of this dude that like it, it was the first time they had met like she had no qualms about that the thing that she was the most upset about was she was wearing her most unattractive bra and she just witnessed a guy get his head ran over by a truck and that that's in like the very beginning the very beginning um so no spoilers um that felt very inconsistent with how like you know she was trying to be described um throughout the rest of the book and then she's a suspense writer and some of her like reactions to things I, I would have liked to have like the suspense writer part of her kind of come out a little bit more in terms of like how she's like thinking of things and um navigating certain situations if that makes sense i feel like that could have helped like build her character a bit more like make it feel more fleshed out and so i think that that's kind of why it took me a while to like really get into this book i was never like super 
sunk into it but I was like entertained throughout the entirety of the story um so yeah I, I'm giving this a three and a half um this was I consider that a win because it did it was basically what I expected and I was this was the one that I had the highest hopes for so then the next book that I'm gonna read is the one that I actually have the lowest hopes for um and that is Ugly Love um this I the only reason why I had the lowest hopes for this is because it feels like it's gonna be a really weird relationship that I'm gonna have a hard time getting behind because basically it's like a, a friends with benefits but they're not even friends they're like not even friends they're just it's just a with benefits kind of a relationship it's not really my thing um but it is her I think this is her third most famous um or third most popular book um so obviously i have it we're gonna give it a shot we'll see how I, how this goes um i will update you when i'm when i'm either 100 pages through or if something comes up that i just really need to talk about <laughs> officially 100 pages into Ugly Love uh, <laughs> and listen I know I said this is the book that I was the most worried about that I was like kind of the, the most apprehensive about kind of the least excited about but truly I am trying to go into each of these books um, with an open mind um, because like I said at the beginning I, I would like to be proven wrong I would like my preconceived opinions of Colleen Hoover and her books to be incorrect and I would like to be pleasantly surprised and enjoy these however <laughs> uh I'm not vibing with this <laughs> it, uh, no not vibing with it like it's okay I'm not completely like against it I'm still like interested enough like I'm not gonna DNF it but there's several aspects of this that either just aren't for me and I don't like them or I think they're done poorly so in this book we're basically we're following Tate and Miles so Tate just moved to San Francisco she's um gonna start a master's program in nursing and so she's kind of like waiting for her like part-time job to kick in um in order to get an apartment for herself so she's moved in with her brother um for the time being who is a pilot um so he's kind of like gone quite a bit um and across the hall lives miles who is also a pilot and very 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 quickly they find that they are very attracted to each other but it's very insta lovey which sometimes like insta love like if it's in a fantasy novel i think it works really well because there's much more going on in the story than just the relationship between the two main characters in here there's not much else going on like it's really the two main characters and it the, so the insta love like at least insta lust but also basically like insta love-esque stuff is just taking too much of like a forefront and it's so that feels like it's moving very fast however it also feels like the story is moving really slow because we're switching between perspectives we're following tate's perspective in present day when she's moving in meeting miles and getting started with classes and then we're also following miles's perspective but it's from six years in the past where <laughs> And this is like the the big thing that I don't like where we're basically following when he's a senior in high school and he's uh, uh, like just insta love boom immediately falling in love with the girl who's about to become his stepsister. I don't like it. I understand that they're not like related by blood but it's still really weird really weird I like forbidden romances in the fantasy perspective of like think of like the bone season where Paige and Arcturus are like star-crossed lovers it's a forbidden romance type of thing 
and it makes sense in the fantasy perspective where they're from two like differing factions basically i don't like forbidden romance when it's in a contemporary setting especially if it's step siblings that's so weird to me it makes me uncomfortable and like i said i get it's like they're not blood related so it's not like incest or anything it's it's just weird to me kind of like another offshoot of like what the plot is going on so it said it says like they have rules like basically they're setting up a kind of like friends with benefits but they're not friends relationship miles has two rules never ask about the past don't expect a future and we know right from the get-go that like something bad happened with Rachel in the past which that's his that's the that's the soon-to-be stepsister that he's falling in love with in the six years ago timeline if that makes sense we know something bad happened with her we don't know what though what's interesting is that in this when we're following Miles's chapters from six years in the past any time Rachel his stepsister is in the scene it turns from regular prose like a regular like paragraph stuff to it being like written like center aligned as if it's like verse because one of the first lines when he sees her is she's like poetry like prose and love letters and lyrics cascading down the center of a page and so anytime now she's in a scene that's how it's written and it would be cute and a clever little like literary device if it was done well. And and this happened in another book that I read where like there was alternating chapters and the perspective from one character was written in regular prose and the perspective from a more like ethereal character was written in verse, but the verse sounds the same as if you were writing in prose. And that's what's happening here. It's like, it's not written poetically or as poetry it sounds the same it maybe the sentences are all shorter but like it's still written as prose and if you're gonna change if you're gonna use the literary device of like using poetry whenever a character is in a scene you need to actually write the poetry like it needs to sound like poetry not just like the normal book with shorter sentences and you just change the formatting like it it doesn't work well and it just falls apart and it's really irritating to be honest because she just like did it halfway and so I don't like that but yeah we're, we're 100 pages in um I'm also just not liking that really there's not much else going on in this book besides like the relationship from six years ago and the budding lustful turmoil of the present day and it so it's not holding my attention very well I prefer to have like other things going on I just wanted to check in with this update this is kind of a long update I apologize um but yeah 100 pages in and I don't know guys I don't know. <laughs> we are back with another update for Ugly Love. I'm now uh, 202 pages through. I've got about 120 pages left and this ain't it, man. This is not it. I'm not having fun with this. I don't like it. I don't know if I, I think I started to talk about this idea my last update and then I like got sidetracked um, because the idea was linked with like a couple other things. Um, the pacing is super weird in this. Super weird. So I was talking about how we alternate chapters. Um, there is a chapter from Tate's perspective present day as her and Miles's relationship is developing and then there's a chapter from Miles perspective from six years ago um when he was getting into a relationship with Rachel who was basically soon to be his stepsister and because of that like because we're only getting one chapter from pre the present day relationship it feels slow but then it also feels like they're moving super fast in this relationship and so it just feels really weird i also don't like that like there's nothing else happening in the story except for the two relationships that we're following the one in present day and the one in the past and for me that's just 
boring. Like I need something else going on in the story. I think I may have mentioned that before but another thing is that really when something when there's like some other subplot that allows the characters to be fully fleshed out as their own individual characters which I don't think is happening here. I can't really see or like get a feel for Tate and Miles as individuals on their own. Like to me right now at like the two third mark they could be anybody. Like they could be anybody. They don't have to me they don't have a fully fleshed out individual self. It's just them in um sorry toast just jumped off the bed. It's them in like perspective of the other person or it's them in relation to the other person. I don't have any solid feel of like who these characters are and I don't care about them because of that and so because I don't care about the characters as individuals it makes it even harder to care about this relationship that like is just pissing me off. <laughs> like this relationship is just making me mad because it was all set up as this like intimacy like sex only relationship and that was the whole thing and Miles set his boundaries but like right from the get-go Tate is like you know wanting something more and it's like girl you agreed to this you and I get like the whole idea of like breaking down his walls and learning about him and making him be like get comfortable enough to be vulnerable but at the same time it's frustrating because she's like upset that she isn't getting more out of this relationship that it's not going anywhere when that's what she agreed to that's what the boundaries were set as and it's it is like the whole idea of like I can fix him or I can I can make him better and stuff like that and it's like I don't know the way it's being handled in this I I'm not I'm not vibing with it I don't like it the only thing that's like keeping me somewhat interested in this story is to see how the whole thing with Miles and Rachel in the six years ago timeline ends up because you know right from the beginning that something bad happened with the relationship and it feels like it's not just they broke up it feels like something actually like bad possibly tragic happened. I don't know. That's the vibe that I got from when you kind of get like introduced to her at the very beginning. And so I'm just like curious to see where that's all going to end up. It's also very dramatic, like <laughs> very dramatic. Um, and that's kind of what's keeping me going with this. Um, you know, I wasn't going to DNF it Anyway, I was gonna keep trudging along, but that's the only thing that's like keeping me somewhat involved in this story. Um, but yeah, I've got about 100, 120 pages left, so we will see how these last 120 pages go. No, just no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, no, that you know, I was already not having a great time with this, and then that last 120 pages just kept pissing me off like no <laughs> no there like I just kept thinking to myself leave him leave him girl just leave him leave him he's not worth it he's not worth it there were lines in here where I'm just like excuse me what what excuse me you're saying this and you're still with him like exhibit a if any other man ever treated me like he did it would be the one and only time i don't put up with the things i've seen a lot of my friends put up with however i find myself continuing to make excuses for him like something that could actually justify his actions last week i'm beginning to fear that maybe i'm not so tough after all i think that's a great judge um if you wouldn't want your friends to go through this if you but if you put your perspective yourself in a different pair of shoes and your friend in the situation that you're in and you wouldn't want that to happen to your friend then uh, maybe you shouldn't be in this relationship um or whatever this even is um and then another one um I know I should have some sort of reaction to everything he just said, but I'm still processing his words. Every single one of his admissions should be a red flag, since they were all also coupled with the hard truth that he doesn't plan on loving me or having a relationship with me. 
but the red flag doesn't rise, the green one does. Excuse me, ma'am? Ma'am, do you know your colors? Do we need to go back to um, preschool and learn the difference between like red and green? Um, because you just said a red flag should be raising, so therefore it should be a red flag. No, like leave him, leave him. Like I get, Miles has a very sad backstory. It is very sad, but that doesn't like, if you, or in a relationship you're finding that you need more from the relationship or something different and the other party isn't giving it to you and isn't budging and you're just not getting the basic things that you need out of a relationship out of it like leave him <laughs> leave him <laughs> he's not worth it like i don't get it it i didn't want to like those things made me just want to root for this relationship even less like i was not Team Tate Miles, I was team leave him. <laughs> leave him, find somebody else. Like, oh my God. And it was just making me so mad. And I don't understand why I was supposed to root for this relationship. I really don't. I understand where I was supposed to root for Miles to like come to terms with things that happened in his past and to heal from them. And I, you know, was rooting for that, but I was not rooting for the relationship in the story because it was unhealthy and not, not good it was not good for tate and i was gonna give this two stars until the really weird ass quote about testicles if you know you know i'm not gonna read it um until that came up and i was just like miss hoover what possessed you to write this and then for the love of god why did an editor out of all the people that had to read this before it got in the hands of the public, why did no one say, hmm, I don't think this is needed in here. I actually think it's kind of creepy and weird and uncomfortable and not funny cute like you're trying to make it out to be. And it probably shouldn't be in here. For the love of God, why did no one say that um yeah this was gonna be two stars until that came up and it's one star i don't care um so congratulations ugly, ugly love you are the second book that i've ever given one star to yeah awful hated it did not like it this is our last book to test out colleen hoover so far we have very mixed results this is her most popular book so we will see hi <laughs> um, so I'm 100 pages through um, it ends with us 100 pages and I definitely have some thoughts so let's talk about what this is about first um, so in this book we're following our main character Lily and she meets this dude Ryle um, and he they're immediately like very attracted to each other yada 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 but the thing is he is only into one night stands he has like this complete aversion to relationships he has no interest in them he is strictly a one night stand kind of man and she is not into that um she if she is gonna get involved with anybody she is looking for a serious relationship and so like you know he wants to sleep with her and she explains like yo I'm not into that and he's like okay I understand um but then they like continue to run into each other and he continues to pester her about <laughs> um sleeping together he is running this um florist shop she opens her own store um and then they run into each other there um and so it's just basically right now um him not being able to take no for an answer and is super unattractive and really icky and i don't like it um but i do like kind of how we're getting more of like our main character outside of just her relationship with this dude um we're getting you know her wanting to open this flower shop and stuff like that um and we're also getting her kind of going through 
her old high school journals um, where she would write diary entries in the form of letters to Ellen DeGeneres because um, she's a huge Ellen fan and we're learning about her meeting this boy named Atlas um, who happened to have been kicked out of his family's house and is like holding up in the abandoned house that is behind her backyard um, and how you know she's helping him um, and they're kind of becoming friends and stuff and I like that storyline. Um, I actually am really digging that one. It's really sweet. Um, it's very interesting um, and I'm liking that one. I'm not liking the storyline with Ryle. He is a creep and weird and I don't care if he's a hot neurosurgeon. He literally at one point is l literally begging her for sex and I'm like ew you're disgusting like if I didn't know that you were like sleeping around with all these other ladies I'd call you an incel because this is incel behavior and not cute um and very weird and I don't like it and I don't understand I feel like this is the relationship we're supposed to be rooting for and I'm actively rooting against it again. I know Atlas who is the kid from Lily's childhood like her teenage years. I know according to the back he's supposed to pop back up in this story like in the present day timeline and I'm like you can't get here fast enough dude. You better not be weird. You better not have like turned creepy or whatever as you've grown older or you know you better be like nice like you were in the teenage storyline so far so far i'm liking it who knows it might change i think that the 15 year old diary entries are written very well i think the rest of the book is cheesy and annoying <laughs> um, i don't like her writing style in general especially in this one it's coming off just very very cheesy but the 15 year old diary entries feel very natural and like a 15 year old diary entry i don't know it's it's interesting i just i don't like how the theme of a lot of these like relationships in these books is it's like oh I'm instantly attracted to you in like and I can't handle it type of a thing and we need to immediately build all of this like grand relationship and grand love story off of just like sexual attraction or whatever I don't know I don't like it. it doesn't work whereas the in the past the story between Lily and Atlas when they're teenagers feels very natural very sweet where they're not even like there's not even really anything going on they're just slowly becoming friends and she's helping him and bringing him food and stuff like that and like it's not weird or creepy it's just kind of this sweet friendship that you can see is going to be blossom into like a love story um starting out and it makes sense it feels very natural it doesn't feel creepy where are the other stories like even you know the, the story with Lily and Ryle in here and even the, the both love stories in Ugly Love the present day one and the past one were very creepy and weird and uh, like just aggressively focused on the sexual aspect and it didn't feel like they emotionally grew at all so not my thing um but this i don't know i'm so far solely because of the diary entries um that focus on kind of lily and atlas um that's the only reason why i'm liking this more than ugly love so far um but yeah we're 100 pages in but right now i hate ryle and he can just leave every time he comes on the page i want to punch him in the face that's where we're at so far um we have another update for it ends with us we are just over halfway through we're about yeah, just over halfway through. We just finished uh, part one. So page, I don't know what page is this? 221. Um, and two kind of, I guess, main thoughts that basically are just reiterating what I've already said before. Um, I am actually genuinely invested in Lily and Alice's relationship from the past. Um, Alice has shown back up in the story. Um, as it said kind of in the, on the back here that he would show back up um, in present day. And um, I hate Ryle. I hate him so much. Um, he's awful. He's just 
he's a terrible character. He's a terrible person. Um, and I hate Lily and Raz's relationship. I also think that it's just not very well, like, fleshed out if we're trying to be sold on, like, Lily being deeply in love with Ryle. Like, I don't feel the connection or the chemistry between the characters. Um, in fact, I think it's, like, cheesy and their banter is annoying, actually. Not just because I hate Ryle as a character, but just, I just don't like their banter at all. Whereas, I feel like there's like genuine chemistry between Lily and Atlas like in the past timeline and everything and I swear if Lily doesn't at the very least leave Ryle at the end of this book um, I'm gonna be furious and I'm gonna hate this book and I'm gonna truly think this is a terrible book if she doesn't leave Ryle. Like I don't even care if she doesn't get together with Alice because like he has a girlfriend now and whatever like I get it. So those are my thoughts so far. Um, I have about I don't know a hundred and 150 pages left um so we will see how this ends um but yeah honestly the only thing that i'm like really enjoying about this um is the uh relationship between lily and alice still that's really the only thing that like i'm actually genuinely invested in and enjoying in this story um but yeah we'll see how the last 150 pages goes um but i did just want to kind of give an up an update since i did finish part one hello um so i finished it ends with us and i have to say the second half of this book feels like a completely different novel um like it's the same story and the story feels cohesive but it felt like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it with, I think with how drastic the tone shift was, which made sense in the story, but also just like everything that was being said, it felt like a very, very different story. When I talk about this, because I have a lot to kind of talk about, um, there's going to be slight spoilers in here. So I will put a timestamp up here when I'm kind of done with spoilers. If you want to hear just kind of like my last impressions of Colleen Hoover um, and kind of my deciding factor. Um, but I do want to talk about this. Um, so again, spoilers. Um, skip ahead if you don't want to hear them. They're not going to be like huge, but they're going to be they're going to be there. So this is marketed incorrectly. This is marketed as a romance. All of her books except for Verity are marketed as romances. This is not a romance book. I don't think you are supposed to be invested in Lily and Ryle's relationship. And the second half really put into perspective kind of the fact that I found the whole first half with Lily and Ryle's budding relationship and how it was maturing and everything, um, how I found it very cheesy to the point of cringy, and also how I felt like Ryle was a walking red flag um, from the moment he came onto the page. Um, there was so many things that from the perspective of an outsider you would see if you would hear about in a relationship and you would be like that's super sus um, and it just doesn't feel right. There's something wrong about that but it's not necessarily like a bad thing but it's just the way that he was very aggressive about their relationship um, and he was very aggressive about moving the relationship forward and everything which is super suspect to me and I didn't like it um, and again I found a lot of their r romance and a lot of their banter was like cringy it was cringy and cheesy but I honestly think knowing how this story progresses and kind of what this book is actually about um, and once you get to that second half it puts all of that into perspective Perspective and makes you realize that I think that you were supposed to be able to see kind of like where the relationship was headed. Um, so Ryle does become physically abusive to Lily and a lot of the second half of this book, actually the entirety of the second half of this book, is talking about how confused um and complicated Lily's relationship or Lily's emotions are now towards Ryle and how just a battered woman in that kind of situation kind of what she would have to deal about kind of the thoughts and confusion and where to place the blame how to feel should I trust him anymore and the fear and everything I think was done so well it was really um actually kind of hard to read at times um I did not anticipate this book making 
me cry but it did make me cry when Lily sat down and finally talked with her mother who had been in an abusive relationship um kind of talked with her mother about what she was going through and kind of she was scared to talk with her mother and her mother was basically like I want you to do what I wasn't what I didn't do you know I want you to get out of this relationship because he it was the idea that he may love you but he's not loving you in the right way he's not loving you the way that you deserve um and it was just i think um hoover had a lot to say on this topic and i found it very very interesting i also really appreciated how um she said at least once or twice um how people from the outside perspective of this kind of relationship are quick to say why didn't the woman leave and kind of show like a sense of disappointment and disgust in the woman not leaving and they don't direct that disappointment and disgust into the idea of why is that a man that man abusive it's never why the man did this it's why did the woman not leave type of a thing and i don't know i think that the way she parsed through kind of like the turmoil that Lily was going through, I think, I honestly think that it was done really well. And I think having that and putting the beginning half of this into that perspective, um, I think it made me understand kind of why I hated the beginning half so much. I still hated it. I still think it could have been done a lot better, but I was really impressed by the second half. Um, I was still sussed out about the idea that like, so Lily gets pregnant and has a baby, right? Um, and when she finally has the kid, she decides that she doesn't want her daughter to see Ryle, her, her now her father, in the way that Lily had to see her father with how abusive her father was to her mother. Um, and so she gets the divorce then and that's kind of the last straw, like kind of the last thing that's like tips her into the over to the decision to get a divorce instead of to reconcile. Um, but I was sussed out with how Ryle has a violent temper, but Lily was totally fine with just letting Ryle have some days of like holding on to Emerson unsupervised and taking care of her unsupervised um, when he has a violent temper. But I understand what Hoover was trying to say where Ryle wasn't good for Lily, but she still wanted the best for her child in order to have her child have some sort of a relationship with both her parents as long as it stayed a healthy and safe relationship. And so I understand what she was trying to say and I do appreciate that. I just, it did still kind of like suss me out a bit. Um, but yeah, overall, I actually, I, I don't know. I, I had, it was a very roller coaster of like how I was feeling about this book. Um, but in the end, I did end up giving it three stars. Um, but I, I really do not think this should be marketed as a romance. Um, I think this is more a story of um, kind of the journey of a battered woman. Um, and I think it's more that than it is a romance at all. All right, so welcome back if you skipped ahead for the spoilers. Um, so this concludes my Colleen Hoover journey um, with the three books that we read during this vlog. Um, we gave three and a half stars. It really was going to be three, but that last, the ending and the fact that it got me, um, you know, it got me. I had to give it three and a half. Honestly, though, like it's on a very low three and a half. It's probably 3.25, but I don't do, I do whole stars or half stars. Um, but I think this would be good for like somebody who's brand new to the thriller genre. Brand new. Um, but it was, it was just okay. Ugly Love. Hated it. I absolutely hated it. This is like a full-on romance and I hated the relationship and I hated the idea of the main character staying in this relationship. Um, I didn't think it was healthy and I didn't think it was good for her. Um, and I think um, the male protagonist should have gotten therapy before the relationship even progressed um and i gave this one star hated it absolutely hated it and this again i do not think this should be marketed as a romance um i think it is a completely different story um and i but i did give this three stars um hated the first half but the second half really put everything into perspective for me um and i i, I don't know so i have i have kind of like 
a mixed bag here um but overall i think colleen hoover is just she she's kind of average she's okay um i guess the only book that was like a pure romance that i read from her was ugly love and i hated it so i don't know i think I don't know if I'd have to try to give like one of her other like pure romance books a try but I honestly am not really looking to read anything by her in the future. I don't know. She's okay. She's not as great as I think everybody's making her out to be but I don't think that she's awful either. Um, I don't know. Very mixed bag. Very mixed bag. Um, so I'm kind of just gonna sit with how I feel about her um, and realize that I can have very um, mixed emotions about it author and that is okay um but thank you so so much for uh sticking around and watching this kind of roller coaster whirlwind of a vlog um hopefully it's not gonna turn out to be too terribly long i did have a lot to say about each of these books um but yeah i just really appreciate you sticking around and watching this um if you'd like me to do like more themed vlogs in the future let me know down in the comments and if you have any kind of like ideas for themed vlogs let me know um i'd love to hear them i'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on these books um if you've read them or if you've read any other colleen hoover books um let me know down in the comments but again thank you so so much for watching this um i hope you consider sticking around and subscribing if you haven't already. But as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!